On behalf of the Adjutant General, California Military Department, Major General David S. Baldwin, welcome to the award ceremony honoring 14 heroic airmen from the 129th Rescue Wing. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party. As part of our rich military heritage, general officers are recognized with traditional military fanfare. Ruffles and flourishes will be played in honor of the Assistant Adjutant General, Brigadier General Matthew P. Beavers. Please remain standing for the posting of the colors and the singing of the national anthem by Senior Airman Dan Olivas. Please be seated.
The Distinguished Flying Cross was authorized by an act of Congress on July the 2nd, 1926. The medal was awarded first to Captain Charles E. Lindbergh, U.S. Army Corps Reserve, for his 3,600-mile solo flight across the Atlantic Ocean in 1927. The Distinguished Flying Cross may be awarded to any person while serving in the armed forces of the United States who distinguishes themselves by heroism or extraordinary achievement while participating in aerial flight subsequent to November 11, 1918. The Distinguished Flying Cross signifies an airman's unselfish dedication to duty and recognizes their heroic actions. Today, it is our pleasure to recognize 11 of these airmen. Please welcome Lieutenant Colonel Reese W. Hunt, Lieutenant Colonel George G. Dona, Major Thomas W. Keegan, Major Mary J. Hegar, Second Lieutenant Andrew S. Hadeen, Chief Master Sergeant Jason E. Red. Senior Master Sergeant Stephen R. Hurt. Senior Master Sergeant Larry I. Hayakamoto. Master Sergeant Luigi Romanillo. Technical Sergeant TGA A. Jones. Staff Sergeant Joshua M. Webster. The Air Medal was established by Executive Order 9158, signed by Franklin D. Roosevelt on May 11, 1942. The Air Medal may be awarded to U.S. military and civilian personnel for single acts of heroism or meritorious achievement while participating in aerial flight. The Secretary of the Air Force approved the award of the V device for valor to the Air Medal recipients for heroism effective October 21, 2004. The Air Medal signifies an airman's commitment to duty and professionalism. Please welcome Major Matthew C. Wenthe. Captain Hung D. Wynn. Technical Sergeant Joseph R. Kenny. Thank you, awardees. Please take your seats. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce the official party for today's ceremony. We are honored to have with us today the Assistant Adjutant General, California Military Department, Brigadier General Matthew P. Beavers. From California's 16th Congressional District, Congresswoman Zoe Lofgren. Assistant Adjutant General, Air, Colonel Nathaniel S. Reddix. (laughs) 
Commander, 129th Rescue Wing, Colonel Stephen J. Buto. We would also like to recognize the follow following distinguished guests. From California's 22nd District, Assemblymember Paul Fong. The Senior Enlisted Leader for the Adjutant General, Command Master Sergeant Major William Clark, Jr. <laughs> Former Commander, California Air National Guard, Major General Retired Robert Hall. Former Staff Judge Advocate, 129th Rescue Wing, Brigadier General, retired, Jeffrey Lawson. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel retired, Jay Craddock, the oldest living 129th Rescue Wing Distinguished Flying Cross recipient. We would be remiss if we did not recognize the real behind-the-scenes heroes, the families, spouses, and significant others who also serve every day at home so our airmen can accomplish their mission both here and abroad. Thank you for your support. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce the presiding officer for today's ceremony, Brigadier General Matthew P. Beavers. Thanks, Chief. So good afternoon and thank you. On behalf of Governor Brown and Major General David Baldwin, the Adjutant General, it's an absolute privilege for Sherry and I to be here today to participate in decorating 14 of the finest airmen in the entire Air Force. Congressman Lofgren, thank you for coming today, ma'am, and thank you for your incredible support to the California National Guard and to the support of airmen and soldiers that uh, reside in the 16th District. Assemblymember Fong, sir, thank you for coming today. Uh, thank you for your leadership. Congratulations on the Mellow Award. Well done, sir. And thank you for the great work on behalf of everybody that calls uh, the 22nd District home and for your great work. To all our retired general officers here today, to the past commanders and former members of the 129th Rescue Wing, it's wonderful to see you all here today. And thanks for your enduring support to the wing. Colonel Bagdasarian, sir, Peggy, it's great to see you here as well. These airmen we recognize today earn their decorations under your watch, and uh, I know that you are as proud of them as I am. And thank you for your incredible service to both the state and nation, sir. Colonel Buto. <laughs> to Colonel Buto and the entire 129 team, Bucky, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. It's a great opportunity to uh, recognize your team. I also want to thank the families that are here today. You know, our soldiers and airmen are not who they are without the support of their families. So it's great to see you all here today. I clearly recognize that every time that we ask a service member to deploy, to deploy here in California, that we ask the same of their families. And it's the sacrifice of the families that makes days like today as special as they are. And I thank you all. So for me, participating in a ceremony recognizing a single airman with Distinguished Flying Cross or the Air Medal would be an incredible opportunity. But to witness 14 airmen from the same unit receiving these awards at the same time is nothing short of extraordinary. You 14 represent California's finest sons and daughters. Your efforts and your service speak to the very spirit of what it means to be an American. It's that tenacity that says no matter how hard the task or how perilous the mission, 
we won't quit. And you didn't quit. And it didn't matter if it was a coalition soldier, an Afghan army soldier, an American soldier, living or dead. It didn't matter if it was one soldier or ten. You put yourselves in harm's way to accomplish your mission, to effect a rescue. And to me, what's more impressive than your exploits in combat is your humility. You are exceeding a humble bunch in your daily lives, yet you are extraordinary in your combat accomplishments. If it weren't for ceremonies like this, I suspect no one would know anything about you, about what you did in combat under the most extreme of circumstances, and what you accomplished when it was your time to act. In my sense, as if we asked you about the missions that brought you here today, you would say you were just doing your job, or you would give credit to other members of your team, to your mission support group folks, or to the maintainers that ensure that your aircraft flew day and night. And I would agree that it's important to recognize every member of the team, because without them, you could not have accomplished your mission. So today's ceremony builds on the incredible reputation of the 129th Rescue Wing, a reputation forged through 10 years of persistent conflict that has seen multiple deployments to Afghanistan and the Horn of Africa. And in that time, the 129th has come to be recognized as one of the most highly decorated units to have fought in Operation Enduring Freedom, with 598 combat medals, including 36 Distinguished Flying Crosses, not including the ones we're presenting today, 26 Air Medals with Valor, not including the ones we're presenting today, 45 Combat Action Medals, 4 Bronze Stars, 2 with Valor. And this is an extraordinary accomplishment for any unit. And imagine you all accomplished this in your spare time. And you also accomplished this at one third the cost of an active component rescue wing. And you also accomplished this while being part of an organization that delivers a billion dollars in economic impact to the people of the state of California. And I will tell you that this is the unique and fundamental value proposition of the National Guard. And I think that sometimes folks in the Pentagon forget that. But I know some folks who haven't forgot that you're in the National Guard. And that's the citizens of California. And they haven't forgotten because it's you. It's the 129th Rescue Wing that shows up at the top of Mount Whitney or Mount Shasta or Mount whatever in bad weather to rescue a hiker with a compound fracture. It's you who magically appear above a super tanker 1,200 miles off the coast of Baja to rescue somebody who has acute appendicitis that would have otherwise died without your help. They don't call the Marines, they don't call the Navy, they don't call the Coast Guard, they call you. So we are all eternally grateful that you are as good at playing at home as you are at playing on the road. So in closing, let me say that we recognize U14 today because you answered the eternal question. And that question is, what compels such courage that leads a person to risk everything so that others might live? Thank you. So I'd like to take this great opportunity to uh, introduce a very special guest for today's ceremony from California's 16th Congressional District, Congressman Zola Lafferman, please. Well, I'm honored to be here this afternoon. I got in late last night from Washington, and uh, I wouldn't have missed being here for any reason. You know, I think just being in your presence, really, is an honor for me. Uh, and as we meet in Washington, sometimes in a fractious manner, it's important to remember the courage, the bravery, and, and the generosity, yes, generosity, of people who volunteer to serve in our armed services. You know, I was thinking as I was coming in here uh, this afternoon 
about Charlie Esparza, you don't know him, why would I mention him? He was a flyer in World War II. And he was part of the, the bombing runs from England over into Germany, would make the skies black. And Charlie uh, probably lived to be in his 80s because he was shot down and he was a prisoner of war. And he never got his distinguished a flying cross because his commanding officers kept getting killed and couldn't put in the paperwork. And long after that, we finally got that right. And here on this station, we finally awarded Charlie his distinguished flying cross. That was a wonderful thing. And it makes me particularly glad to think you're going to get your recognition now when you need it, not years from now to know that the country is appreciative of what you have done, proud of the bravery that you have shown, and grateful to you and to your families. You know, the, um, the braveries that you've done, the uh, up to eight rescue missions a day, saving uh, over uh, 350 injured people, uh, your mission uh, is an awesome one. And I'm going to conclude because I have been promised that I'm going to hear a little bit about the deeds that each and every one of you did so that we can give thanks and prayers for each of you and your incredible bravery and service to our wonderful, wonderful country. God bless America. Thank you very much. Thank you, General Beavers and Congresswoman Lofgren. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we will read the citations to accompany the Distinguished Flying Cross and Air Medal decorations. We ask all military members not in formation to stand at this time. General Beavers, will you please return to the stage? Recipients of the Distinguished Flying Cross and Air Medals will come forward in chronological order of missions. Bring the wing to attention, please. The Distinguished Flying Cross with Valor has been awarded to Major Thomas W. Keegan. Major Thomas W. Keegan distinguished himself by heroism while participating in aerial flight near Bastion Forward Operating Base, Afghanistan on 29 June 2009. On that date, Major Keegan led a two-ship formation, call sign Pedro 35 flight, on an urgent medical evacuation into the volatile Helmand province. The first and second of four missions of that day were to a point of injury where a British vehicle had overturned into a canal. While the trail aircraft was on approach to the crash site on the second mission, Major Keegan noted numerous friendly armored personnel vehicles firing outbound from his three o'clock position. Major Keegan displayed valor in the face of danger when he broke his aircraft through multiple gun patterns directly between the enemy compound of origin of fire and his defensive wingmen on the ground conducting casualty evacuation operations. His calm demeanor under fire and willingness to highlight himself, aircraft and crew in order to draw enemy fire away from the vulnerable aircraft in the landing zone and its patience allowed his flight to successfully extract the wounded British soldier. Major Keegan's actions directly contributed to the Pedro's widespread reputation from bravery and dependability, giving much needed peace of mind to the soldiers conducting ground combat operations. The outstanding heroism and selfless devotion to duty displayed by Major Keegan reflect great credit upon himself and the United States Air Force.
The Distinguished Flying Cross with Valor has been awarded to Lieutenant Colonel George C. G. Dona, Major Mary J. Hager, Senior Master Sergeant Stephen R. Burt, and Technical Sergeant T.J. A. Jones. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel George G. Dona, Major Mary J. Hager, Senior Master Sergeant Stephen R. Burt, and Technical Sergeant T.J. A. Jones distinguished themselves by heroism while participating in aerial flight near Kandahar Airfield, Afghanistan on 29 July 2009. On that date, Colonel Dona led a two-ship formation, Pedro 15 and Pedro 16, tasked with the urgent medical evacuation of three United States soldiers injured when their convoy was attacked. While Pedro 16 provided fire cover, Pedro 15, piloted by Colonel Dona and Major Hager, used Sergeant Burst's direction to execute a tactical approach to a brownout landing alongside the vehicles. Immediately, the aircraft received a bullet round through Major Hager's windshield, injuring her arm and Colonel Dona's leg. Despite the danger, a pararescue team departed the aircraft to assist with the medical evacuation. However, due to heavy fire, the aircraft was forced out of the hot landing zone. Sergeant Jones established critical communication with higher command and clearly relayed the details of their dire situation. After several minutes airborne, the crew received a radio call from a ground team that the patients were ready for extraction. Despite the obvious threat, they voluntarily risked their lives to return to rescue their patients and pararescue them from the ambush. Once on the ground, Pedro 15 started taking accurate, belt-fed, heavy machine gun fire, damaging multiple systems. Resisting the urge to escape, the crew waited on the ground while the patients were loaded. Sergeant Jones assisted with the loading of the casualties to ensure the aircraft would spend minimal time on the ground exposed to barrage of enemy fire. Sergeant Burt aided the pilots during takeoff with calls that kept them clear of terrain and used the vast systems knowledge to aid the co-pilot as she tried to keep the aircraft functional. On takeoff, Major Hager and Sergeant Burt noticed the number one engine on the verge of shutdown due to fuel loss. Major Hager saved the lives of all on board by immediately selecting the number two fuel tank. Colonel Dona flew the disabled aircraft off the ground, but due to multiple system failures, had to land less than two miles away. The crew was on the ground for 18 minutes receiving enemy fire. Upon extraction, Sergeant Bird administered first aid and assisted in the transfer of patients to Pedro 16. The patients and pararescue men were then extracted by Pedro 16, while Colonel Dona, Major Hager, and Sergeant Jones were extracted on the skids of an OH-58 helicopter. Their actions saved the lives of all three patients and ensured the survival of the crew. The outstanding heroism and selfless devotion to duty displayed by Colonel Dona, Major Hager, Sergeant Burt, and Sergeant Jones reflect great credit upon themselves and the United States Air Force. The Distinguished Flying Cross with Valor has been awarded to Lieutenant Colonel Reese W. Hunt, Lieutenant Andrew S. Hedin, and Chief Master Sergeant Jason E. Red. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Reese W. Hunt, Second Lieutenant Andrew S. Hedin, Chief Master Sergeant Jason E. Red distinguished themselves by meritorious achievement and heroism while participating in aerial flight near Kandahar Airfield, Afghanistan on 9 August 2009. On that date, Colonel Hunt flew the lead aircraft, Pedro 15, in a joint force formation of HH-60Gs and Army UH-60s to rescue five critically wounded American soldiers 
from an ongoing firefight. A Navy SEAL team, call sign Jaguar 09, had been pursued by a larger force of Taliban fighters and was taking heavy fire. The team was holed up in a walled compound and had five wounded that needed immediate evacuation or they faced being overrun. En route to the objective, Colonel Hunt's four-ship helicopter formation became an eight-ship ad hoc task force of OH-58s, A-10s, and a Predator UAV. After establishing communications with the ground controller, the crew quickly realized the potential for enemy activity. Once the JTAC called the area secure, Colonel Hunt directed the unarmed Blackhawks to hold to the south and led the Pavehawks to the landing zone. Chief Red sighted the smoke that had marked the LZ in a dry riverbed and directed Colonel Hunt's landing in near zero visibility brown out conditions. Once on the ground, Lieutenant Hadid supervised the loading of four of the wounded before the aircraft cabin ran out of space. Colonel Hunt directed his wingman to begin his approach to load the final patient and then began his takeoff. On climb up from the zone, Pedro 15 came under an intense barrage of small arms and RPG fire, one exploding close enough to the aircraft that both Lieutenant Hadid and Colonel Hunt felt the concussion from the blast. Reacted, reacting instinctively, Lieutenant Hadid engaged the enemy squad at a tree line 50 meters away, temporarily suppressing the threat. Chief Red took tactical lead of the aircraft, calling a break in the opposite direction. Without regard to his own safety, he then directed the gunnery pattern by positioning himself almost completely out of the aircraft in order to maintain visual contact with the enemy. His situational awareness allowed Colonel Hunt and Lieutenant Hadid to protect their vulnerable wingmen by attacking the enemy squad from multiple directions. Colonel Hunt kept the aircraft in a tactical firing position throughout the engagement while Chief Red directed Pedro 15 through successive reattacks. Placing themselves between their wingmen and the advancing enemy threat, the crew continued to put deadly and devastating fire on the enemy so that their wingmen could escape. On the second gun pass, Lieutenant Hadid identified another group of enemy fighters that was repositioning for attack against Pedro 16. He demonstrated unwavering courage while bringing his weapon to bear on the target the final time, decisively eliminating the threat with a low-level scraping pass. The crew's exceptional valor and superb airmanship saved the lives of 16 people and two aircraft. The outstanding heroism and selfless devotion to duty displayed by the crew of Pedro 15 reflect great credit upon themselves and the United States Air Force. The Distinguished Flying Cross with Valor has been awarded to Technical Sergeant Luigi Romanillo. Technical Sergeant Luigi Romanillo distinguished himself by heroism while participating in aero flight near Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan on 4 May 2010. On that date, Sergeant Romanillo flew a high-risk medical evacuation mission to extract wounded coalition forces engaged by over 100 insurgents at an ambush site near the Tagbad Valley. En route, Sergeant Romanillo expertly prepared his team to evacuate several coalition soldiers in minimal time. The landing area was a small zone near the center of contested village with hostile insurgents less than 200 meters away on the surrounding high ground. The confined area required a two-wheel hover leaving the cargo door nearly five feet off the ground with the patients between the aircraft and the enemy. On approach, the aircraft received small arms damage to several control surfaces. Despite these obstacles, Sergeant Romanillo and his teammates stepped off the aircraft into the firefight. Under a withering hail of enemy bullets, he led his team in recovering the patients while gunfire continued to pepper the helicopter and the surrounding terrain. He directed the ground element to load the first casualty while taking control of the other two patients, rapidly securing. En route to the medical facility, 
Sergeant Romaneo administered life-saving treatment to his patient who was suffering from a gunshot wound. Sergeant Romaneo's actions led to the successful evacuation of two wounded coalition soldiers and repa repatriation of two killed in action. The outstanding heroism and selfless devotion to duty displayed by Sergeant Romaneo reflect great, upon, great credit upon himself and the United States Air Force. The Distinguished Flying Cross with Valor has been awarded to Senior Master Sergeant Larry I. Hakamoto and Staff Sergeant Joshua M. Webster. <laughs> Senior Master Sergeant Larry I. Hakamoto and Staff Sergeant Joshua M. Webster distinguished themselves by heroism while participating in aerial flight near Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan on 27 June 2010. On that day, they participated in eight nonstop casualty evacuation missions in support of coalition operations. For nearly seven hours, Sergeant Webster aided Sergeant Hayakamoto by prioritizing patients and treated wounded personnel, many who would not have survived if not for their immediate medical treatment. On one mission, braving enemy fire, Sergeant Webster was selflessly hoisted down from the helicopter to a soldier trap below. Sergeant Hayakamoto courageously manned the aircraft's 50 caliber machine gun, exposing himself to enemy fire. With rounds striking only feet from his position, as well as the helicopter above, Sergeant Webster quickly snatched the wounded soldier to safety. While rounds were still striking the aircraft inches from his position, Sergeant Hayakamoto began treating the soldier for multiple broken bones and traumatic head injuries. Exercising extreme discipline, he withheld fire because he was unable to possibly identify enemy locations. Ultimately, Sergeant Hayakamoto and Sergeant Webster's heroic actions saved 13 United States soldiers and coalition forces. The outstanding heroism and selfless devotion to duty displayed by Sergeant Hayakamoto Sergeant Webster to replay credit credit upon himself, themselves, and the United States Air Force. <laughs> the Air Medal with Power <clears throat> has been awarded to Major Matthew C. Wenthe. Technical Sergeant Joseph R. Kenny. <laughs> Major Matthew C. Winthy and Technical Sergeant Joseph R. Kenny distinguished themselves by meritorious achievement while participating in aerial flight near Bastion Ford Operating Base in Afghanistan on 29 June 2009. On that date, the crew of Pedro 35 conducted multiple urgent medical evacuation missions in the volatile and heavily defended Babaji area of the Helmand province. The first and second of four missions that day were to a point of injury where a British vehicle had overturned into a canal. While Pedro 36 was on approach to a crash site on the second mission, Pedro 35 observed small arms fire and rocket propelled grenades from a compound 300 meters west of the landing aircraft. Without regard for their own personal safety, the crew maneuvered to re engage the enemy compound from which they had just been attacked. The displayed unquestionable power in the face of danger quickly coordinated with the Apaches overhead and the Joint Terminal Air Controller to deconflict fire support so Pedro 35 could remain engaged on the target and draw enemy fire. Pedro 36 still on the ground. While receiving fire from the enemy compound, the crew directed 50 caliber fire into the enemy firing port. Their actions served as a pointed example of professionalism and bravery for their unit members to emulate. The professional skill and airmanship displayed by Major Wenthe and Technical Sergeant Kinney reflect great credit upon themselves and the United States Air Force.
The Air Medal with Valor has been awarded to Captain Hung D. Nguyen. <laughs> Captain Hung D. Nguyen distinguished himself by meritorious achievement while participating in aerial flight in the Kandahar province of Afghanistan on 9 August 2009. On that date, Captain Nguyen was the co-pilot on the lead aircraft of an eight-ship force sent to recover five Afghan soldiers seriously wounded during a still ongoing firefight. When called to recover the five casualties, Captain Nguyen provided time-critical navigation and communication input to the pilot flying while inbound to the landing zone, while the unarmed Blackhawks held in a safe location. Captain Wynn identified the landing zone and then managed the aircraft systems while the pilot performed a brownout landing. On the ground, four of the five wounded soldiers were loaded onto the aircraft. Immediately after takeoff, the aircraft came under intense small arms and rocket propelled grenade fire. He directed the pilot to perform evasive maneuvers while the flight temperatures on the number one engine <coughs> but assessed the aircraft to, as combat capable. Captain Wynn placed total confidence in his crew by staying the course and monitoring the number one engine while the battle raged around him. His calm demeanor in the chaos of combat resulted in 16 lives saved and two aircraft saved. Professional skill and airmanship displayed by Captain Wynn reflect great credit upon himself and the United States Air Force. And again, ladies and gentlemen, please give a round of applause to the recipients of these decorations. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Congresswoman Anna G. Eshoo from California's 14th Congressional District was unable to attend today's event, but wanted to pass along her congratulations to the Distinguished Flying Cross and Air Medal awardees. Each awardee has received a congratulatory letter and a certificate of special congressional recognition signed by Congresswoman Eshoo. The letters read, Dear award recipients, congratulations on receiving the Distinguished Flying Cross and Air Medals for your outstanding heroism and devotion to duty. This award speaks volumes about you and your embodiment of the Air Force core values of integrity, service, and excellence, and we salute you for it. In honor of your service, please accept the enclosed certificate of special congressional recognition. All my best. Signed, Anna G. Eshoo, Member of Congress. <laughs> Members of the 129th Rescue Wing have served in every major conflict since World War II. For their actions in the line of duty, several members have been recipients of some of the highest military decorations, including today's honorees. To preserve the wing's rich history, Colonel Buehler requested the 129th Rescue Wing Alumni Association, Ella Davis, identify all the ways who have served in the wing and awarded a silver star, bronze star, distinguished flying cross, or a purple heart. The Heritage Award display is the project's culmination. The Alumni Association is pleased to provide the wing a Heritage Award display. The Alumni Association Board would like to acknowledge Ms. Linda Boss's work in creating the display. We've asked Lieutenant Colonel Jesse Craddock to help dedicate the display. Colonel Craddock is both an original California Air National Guard member as well as an original 129 Special Operations Group member. Retiring in 1965 as the group's deputy commander. 
is a World War II veteran having flown B-25s in Italy. Colonel Craddock is the oldest living wing member to be awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross. In addition, he has served as the Alumni Association's second president. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant Colonel Jesse J. Craddock. I don't know uh, if it's an honor to be the oldest, because that means I'm next to go. <laughs> but uh, I joined the Air National Guard in 1948, when they were just forming in California. After World War II, there wasn't any National Guard, Air National Guard. When the Air Force started in 1947 as a separate unit, in the following year they started the Air National Guard uh, throughout the country. And we started out in Alameda. We Went for about six months without any airplanes, and we got two P-51s and stationed at uh, Oakland. And uh, after we secured more airplanes, we built a new hangar at Hayward. We moved into Hayward. We were there for we were there. I was I got out in '65, and uh, I think we were there a few more years before we moved to Moffett. So I've had a long history. I've kept in touch with the unit and uh, been very pleased with their actions. I want to say this. We were, today we saw a lot of brave men and women get combat medals. The uh, figures show that only one person in a unit, one out of ten, get to actual shooting combat. It means the rest of the unit is support. And I think that any, uh, I think you all saw the movie Patton. One of the first things that Patton said was that the Army is a team. Any unit is a team. It has to be a team. Yes, you, you have men that go to combat and get the medals, but the people that are in the background, the mechanics, the su supply people, the food service people, the personnel people, all of those people are support to support the combat veterans. And as a result of that, I would like to take this opportunity to salute, but before I do that, I want to tell you one thing. Years ago, I was doing some um, studying of weapon systems, and I got to studying the bow and arrow. It was kind of, kind of a funny thing to study, but the uh, bow and arrow is one of the oldest weapons used by man for both uh, combat and hunting. But the thing is, I got to thinking, you know, that arrow, which was the combat system, part of the system, was absolutely useless without the bow. If it didn't have the bow, the arrow was just a, a stick with a point on it. And that's the way I feel about the support units of any unit. So, the support units of the 129th, I want to salute you in behalf of the people that got this medal today for your support, so they were able to go to combat and receive these medals. And as this, and one other thing, I think maybe the chaplain should get a little extra boost too. So thank you very much. Thank you. Colonel Buto, would you please come to This is the uh, plaque that we put together. Uh, Linda did a, we already have given her a hand for this. She did a very good job putting the, there's four of these, one for each medal that was given today, that is each type of medal. This is the Distinguished Flying Cross with all the members of the unit that have got a Distinguished Flying Cross all the way back to World War II. So this I want to present to you and I want you to put this in the Headquarters on the wall so everybody can see it and enjoy it forever. Thank you. To the members of the Alumni Heritage Association, thank you all so very much.
that we've said it before, and we'll continue to say this, that the members of the 120th Rescue Wing, we stand on the shoulders, uh, shoulders of giants. And uh, the wing that you left us is a proud wing with rich heritage and history. And thank you so very much for continuing to share it with us. Uh, we're going to immortalize it, and we're going to uh, celebrate it, and we're going to uh, instill this in the people. The youngest airmen in this organization will keep that heritage going on forever. So thank you very much from all of us at the wing. We salute you as well. Thank you, Colonel Spranick and Buto. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Thank you all for coming. At the conclusion of the Air Force song, please feel free to come forward and join the official party in congratulating today's award recipients.